Damian Zamora, CEO of Go Mobile Solutions, and super pumped yet again to bring you an awesome webinar training that is going to be packed and loaded with content. Um, I'm joined by two very good friends of mine, Mike Philsame and Laura Betterly, uh, both who I've masterminded with over the last several years and really have come you know, become very familiar with their expertise and specifically with Laura and her expertise in Facebook marketing. This is something that is on everybody's mind. Obviously, you, your kids, and probably even your, your parents are all on Facebook. They're all on their mobile devices. We've talked about this a lot. But the thing that people have not figured out just yet is how to leverage Facebook to increase your business, how to land clients, how to land clients for your clients. And today, Mike and Laura are going to just crystallize all of this for you and show you how easy it really can be for you to be able to master Facebook marketing and really make a ton of money doing so. So, Mike, are you there? I'm here, Damien. Thank you very much, and uh, I appreciate it. And Laura's here also on standby, and uh, we'll be doing some Q&A uh, at the end as well. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you both for taking the time to join in this webinar training for the Go Mobile community. We're all super pumped about learning how to leverage Facebook. You clearly, both of you are clearly the masters at this, so I'm honored to have you today. And uh, let's go ahead and take it from the top and rock. So I just want to let everybody know this will be highly interactive. So you want to open up the on the GoToWebinar control panel. Down at the bottom, you'll see the chat. Please expand that window. We'll be answering your questions throughout the, the webinar. And if you have anything on your mind, please just go ahead and put it in there. And uh, Mike, let's have some fun, huh? Yeah, Laura can be answering some questions uh, you know, while, uh, while I'm driving the slides. I'm actually keeping my little presentation thing closed so I don't get distracted and try to read questions while I'm driving the slides. So we can, we can get it for you both ways. She can handle the questions, and I'll drive the slides. And, of course, we'll do Q&A at the end. Now, I also know that um, you know, almost everybody that's on this webinar right now um, you know, aspires to be or is a local marketing consultant. And the, the, uh, the stuff that we're going to go over works for anybody that has an online presence or, uh, or as well for local marketers, uh, local businesses that need to get leads. So if you're a local marketer, you know that your business needs leads and uh, needs advertising. So uh, one of the most popular questions we get usually at the end of a Q&A is, does this work for local businesses? So I'm going to, uh, since I know the, uh, you know the people that are on, I'm, I'm going to preface that before we st uh, get started. So now we will jump right in. Uh, as you see the slide here, it says traffic, lots of it, and how to get it cheap and how to get it good. So uh, we're going to be focusing on Facebook traffic because we believe it is the, um, the the most profitable traffic that you can get right now on the web. So the good times of getting traffic are back. And I say that meaning that first, you know, there was, um, you know, there was Google AdWords and things were really good with Google AdWords. Um, and then, you know, Google changed their things and made it very, very difficult for people to market uh, on AdWords uh, because they wanted their search engine results to look very, very similar. Uh, to exactly how the ads would look. They wanted them to look the same. So, you know, they took away all the things that direct marketers want. You know, landing pages without navigation, uh, squeeze pages, things like that. Facebook uh, hasn't done that to us. And we're having a little fire department running by there, so if you're hearing that, I apologize. <clears throat> now, with Facebook, things have changed drastically in the last year. Uh, if uh, you know, the people that I talked to, Damien, you might also remember uh, conversations used to go like this. Hey, I saw your ad on Facebook. Uh, how are you doing with it? Oh, man, you know, uh, I was crushing it for about, you know, three weeks. And, you know, and then I had to, then it slowed down. Then I had to change the ad and it went back up. But you know what? It, I just couldn't get anything past, you know, my 5,000 followers and the small target I was able to do. And that, that's, that's very indicative of conversations. Oh. Uh, that we used to have you know, Mike, about a year ago. Yeah, I got to tell you, that is so true. In fact, that's one of the reasons we haven't dove in yet head first 
with Facebook marketing because in talking with some of our mastermind students, they found the formula that worked, but they were capped. They weren't able to figure out how to you know, scale it, and that was the main problem. So I'm really excited to learn about this today. Yeah, wait, wait till you see what we talk about um, similar audiences, and, and the, the, when we get into that, uh, it's going to get very, very exciting. So when I say the good times of great traffic are back, that's exactly it. So moving along here, <clears throat> oops. Uh, not just uh, any old traffic, but the highest quality traffic that you can get, okay? And you can get practically as much as you want. And that's what uh, you and I were just talking about, Damien. Uh, back in the past, you could get highly targeted traffic, but it was to a small select. Now, you can get as much as you want. Uh, you can attract buyers to your offers, which is what people want. You know, basically, if in a local business, you want that customer that comes in with the coupon and says, hey, I'm here to get my... Um, you know, I'm here to get my my uh, my hair done. I'm here to get uh, you know my uh, you know my haircut. I'm here to get my muffler uh, you know uh, you know t uh, taken care of. My tires rotated, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. Okay. Uh, next, even if they don't buy, you can get them back. So that's the important thing. So that once you you know once you get that that visit to your site, if they don't. Uh, take action or opt in or do whatever the call to action is you can bring those vi visitors back and you can control the budget like never before there are some new things with Facebook that are just incredible we'll be going over that as well so to understand how to get traffic first uh, let's discuss why people don't all right why traffic getting is so freaking hard for most people well first of all they think like an entrepreneur uh, they try to sell too soon, and they make it up as they go. That's you know, meaning they don't have a game plan. They're just like, all right, well, I'm going to design an ad. Uh, I guess I'll say this in the ad, and I will, you know, make my landing page look like this. Okay. Um, continued. They don't know about the right tools that can help them um, do market research and create good uh, good ads, good websites, good landing pages, good split testing, all that type of stuff. Uh, they target riffraff, meaning you know they, they go in and they use the, the very, very basics of targeting uh, the way that you know Facebook used to do it. Hey, I want to reach every, every person that speaks English that's over 18, uh, you know male, female or whatever, and they're basically targeting uh, you know just people that aren't interested in your offer. Um, they're one and done, <clears throat> and what that means uh, it's twofold. Number one, you know they they get a click and then they send it to a page and that's it. And they, there's no follow up sequence. There's there's nothing else that's done. It's click to an ad and and praying for a call to action on a website. It's a, it's a recipe designed for failure. Um, and they buy into the myth of free traffic, which we'll get into uh, in just a. a little bit so let's find some positive in those negatives okay uh, thinking like an entrepreneur what does that mean well it means that they're thinking about it too much right that's what entrepreneurs do uh, you know we want to multitask we want to create things on our own you know we like to say things I want to do it my way and that's not the right way to do it with traffic you shouldn't think like an entrepreneur you want to think like an investor okay thinking like an investor means this uh, you want to manage risk, which means you start with small, uh, affordable uh, budgets and you test. What we do in our business, uh, we'll get into that a little bit detail later, is we start with $25 tests, uh, $50 maximum. Because if, we, you know, if we're getting clicks at, at $0.25 cents a click, well, you know, uh, you know $50, $50 is going to get us 200 clicks. That is enough data enough data to let us know if our website uh, funnel is working all right um, next is they focus uh, when investors fo focus on return on investment all right so there are many different places that you can get traffic out there but we believe that Facebook is the most profitable so if I'm an investor right and I'm investing in stocks the two things I want is the highest return on investment with the lowest risk all right, and so there are things that we're going to show you going forward in terms of uh, tools that can help you to do this, so you know what you're doing before you even go in. It's kind of like looking at a, at a stock portfolio and understanding the performance of a product like Apple, 
uh, rather than throwing uh, you know a dart at a dartboard and saying, well, you know, let me let me just pick this stock because I like the name of it. All right, and when you think like an investor, you say things like, if I can turn fifty cents into seventy-five cents, I'll do that all day. If I can hand you a dollar and you can hand me two dollars back, the first question I have is, how many times can I do this? Can I just create a system that can automate this and you know do it do it forever you know that's what an investor wants to do all right um, moving on again when we're talking about they try to sell too soon this is something that we call will you marry me marketing all right <clears throat> so here's here's why we call this wrong way of marketing will you marry me marketing Damien you know uh, last time we were up at uh, Big Bear Lake uh, you know you came with Nikki uh, your son was there, you have a wonderful marriage, you have uh, a family, and you look at that, and you look at that as, you know, the fruits of a of, of, of beautiful relationship that took time, right? Right. Uh, but, okay, so that's how marketing is, okay? Uh, you cannot walk up to Nikki the day that you met her. You know, whether it was, you know, at work or at a party or at a, you know, a club or a Thanksgiving dinner or whatever, the first time you see her, you cannot walk up to her and say, oh, my God, uh, you are the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life. I would like to get married with you, move out to Newport Beach. I would like to have a child with you. And then you get down on your knee and put a ring in front of her and go, will you marry me? Um, as much as you know, there's one or two people here that think that that's romantic only because uh, they know that Nikki knows you now. But imagine she didn't, right? You know that you just walked right up to her at the mall and did that. You would seem like a total freak. Like you can just imagine her face would be like, "Excuse me, okay." And that's what marketers are doing when they market from a click to a video sales letter. They are going for what we call the macro commitment. In, in the scenario I just went over, the macro commitment is you getting on your knee and showing a ring and saying, will you marry me? Okay? There was a series of micro commitments that led up to that. Damien, how, how long did you, did you date Nikki before you got married, uh, before she said yes? Damien may be on mute, everyone, or may have stepped away. Oh, four years. Did you hear that? Oh, yeah. No, we heard you now. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah. No, we hear okay. you. So four years, okay? So uh, it's it's uh, it's the same same thing. You you don't even ask them to uh, buy a drink yet, like when you first meet them. We like to go for the the most micro commitment. We say when you meet somebody, let's say at a at a bar, go for the the simplest little thing that you can't say no. And in this example, uh, in a real life scenario, you would say. Uh, hey, can you pass me a napkin? That's a surefire way of not getting a no, right? Because if you say, hey, how are you? Uh, uh, my name's Damien. Can I buy you a drink? And she says, no, thank you very much. Um, I'm not drinking tonight, right? So, uh, Damien, if you remember the movie with Bruce Willis and uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt called Loopers, right? It was about <clears throat> him living in, uh, in the present and his future self visits him. And if at any point he did anything wrong, um, uh, he, could, he could change the future and poof, the entire future just changed. Bruce Willis just changed, right? So you could imagine if you went up and your first opening line up to Nikki was something that you know, turned her off, then everything you have, poof, it would just disappear. No marriage, no child, no nothing. And that's the very same concept that I want to get with you guys when you're doing marketing and you're asking for the sale too soon right after the click. You cannot go for a macro commitment right away because your marketing will just poof. It will just go away. You haven't earned the right uh, for the customer. It's not all about you. It's about them and we'll go on and we'll show examples about that. So micro commitments are the key. Micro commitments mean start after the click with a landing page that promises them something based on the problem that they're having. So you can do a survey. Let's say people are having a problem sleeping. You can have a survey that says, what's the single biggest problem that keeps you up at night, right? And then you can say, I work two jobs, I'm a single mom, right? And what are you asking those people to do? A micro-commitment. They click a radio button on 
the survey and then you lead them through a little survey or promise them a free report remember you got to build that value at the beginning so much more about them and make it very very easy you don't want them to fill out a form with all these these you know name email address postal all this information you lead them through micro commitments lead to macro commitments the same way that when uh, Damien met Nikki he started with small, easy micro commitments that one day allowed him to basically say, Nikki, hit that add to cart button and let's get married. All right, so that's, that's a key that I want you to understand and we're going to delve into that a little bit future. When we were talking before about making it up as they go, they start from scratch. Um, they design an ad and they say, well, this is the headline I'm going to use. This is the uh, the body text underneath and I'm gonna just choose any old image and uh, my landing page um, this one looks pretty good and uh, I think a headline like this would be good and that's that literally is a waste of time alright um, you need to model your advertising after proven examples you need to find out whatever is working in your competition what what are they doing and you need to model after that and we're going to show you how you can find that all right uh, remember what we were saying before they don't know about the right tools so spending money on traffic is easy all right anyone can go get fifty dollars worth of traffic so um, there's a couple hundred people on this webinar um, Damien Laura myself and as I look out my window uh, I can see probably about 30 or 40 people walking the street down here in the gas lamp in San Diego so here's the thing I want to tell you straight up that getting traffic is very easy. If I got everybody on this webinar and everybody on the street and, and all the uh, presenters and, and admin on this call, a $50 gift certificate or coupon from Facebook to get $50 worth of traffic, guess what? Facebook will give us $50 worth of traffic, okay? Um, but most of, the time, most of the time, it's a waste of that $50. So tell you a little story about um, my personal trainer. Uh, you know, he's, he trains myself, Frank Kern, John Reese, um, Andy, over the years, you know, he's, he's helped uh, uh, us out a lot. So you can imagine the types of conversations we have when, we, when we're working out and jogging. So over the last uh, few years, he's, he's set up um, an information product business on eating right and working out and losing weight and getting fit. Um, and you know you know that type of business it's a health and fitness business so he tried Facebook advertising and about two months ago while we were jogging he said you know Mike I, you know I don't spend the kind of money that you do on Facebook and you know I spend about 10 bucks a day and I've been doing this now for like three months and you know what I mean man I've spent about a thousand dollars and I haven't even made a single sale so you know I think Facebook's just not working for me and I said, oh, man, that's, that's too bad. So what's happening? They're not sending you the traffic? And he said, oh, no, no, <laughs> they're sending me the traffic. I'm just not making any sales. So I kind of first chuckled, but then I had an epiphany. He doesn't have a traffic problem. He has a conversion problem and a targeting problem. He, he, he has, he's not targeting the right people. And remember, uh, you know, this is a guy that also wanted to do um, local advertising to get people as personal clients. So I broke it down for him and I told him this is how you break it down and this is how you do your conversion. You're asking for the sale too soon. You're not even talking about them and we've since been able to help him with his business. So I believe there's a reason why people don't advertise, Damien. I believe that they've tried it before. I believe that everybody on this webinar for the most part, probably 90 percent of them have gone somewhere and bought an ad and failed and we call that uh, you know the scar of advertising and the more money you spend the bigger the scar and the bigger the scar the harder it is for you to ever come back to advertising and I get it I've been there before I know what it's like to go out and spend money and not get a return and then you start saying things like you know what Facebook doesn't work for me Facebook um, doesn't work for my market uh, Facebook doesn't work for local advertising. I'll show you time and time and time again where people are crushing it with this. I have a, a guy that is the VIP uh, doorman at one of the popular clubs down here in San Diego. We're building a funnel for him where he's going to advertise 
to local people in the San Diego area, target them based on them being single, a certain age group, and so many other demographics that we're going to get to in a minute, uh, you know, based on their income and all these different things that we know that this is their type of lifestyle, and we're going to bring them to a landing page where he's going to uh, tell them how he, he can be um, a VIP, give them a great experience, and give them a free bottle uh, of vodka worth uh, $300 for their first VIP where it doesn't cost them anything. Um, so we're going to blow him up to be the most probably the most successful you know VIP host in the country because nobody's doing anything like this all right so again i wanted to just bring that up that anybody can get traffic and it's easy to lose money and losing money creates scars so we need to we need to not let those scars uh change what our thinking because i'm going to i'm going to bring a paradigm as we start moving forward here so yes technology can show you how to make that $50 worth of traffic feel like $500 worth of clicks, all right? And Facebook, uh, Facebook's traffic tool set is very, very powerful. Uh, just in the last 30 days, they have added some incredible things that we're going to be sharing with you that the more they keep adding this stuff, the more it's blowing us away. And I, I, I got to tell you, I'm excited to get to that, uh, that part coming up soon. Remember we said they target the riffraff. Expert traffic getting is about targeting buying behavior. Finding the right people that want to come into your clients uh, ready to spend. Uh, the, the types of clients that, uh, you know, no matter what they're looking for in a local business, they are the, not only the right prospect, but they, they're proven to buy. Okay? <clears throat> um, most people incorrectly target keyword searches. All right, as opposed to finding buyers, okay, because that's the old thinking of search engines and Google AdWords and all those different things. Who you target to see your offers is vital, not what they're searching. That's old school, and we'll explain why. All right, the most likely to buy your product visitors is available to you right now, and Facebook knows who they are. All right, what we're talking about one and done, no matter how good your offer is, at least 90% of your traffic leads, and I'm being very, very generous. Um, I don't know anybody with a 10% conversion. When we do a product launch, uh, we create an early bird list, and that early bird list converts at 10% for about an hour. All right, Most people are going to convert at about 1%. And if you're good, uh, 2%. And if you're great, you'll have a 3% conversion on the web. And 1, 2, and 3%, you can make a lot of money with those conversions. So uh, the truth is 99% of the people that click on your ad leave never to come back all right and that is a waste of money if you don't know how to get those people back and we're going to show you how to do that without even having to get their email address all right so the people that leave are the richest source of traffic you can get now that that may sound strange you're saying um, wait a second you're telling me that the people that left my website I can advertise back to those people, and you're saying that that's the most profitable advertising you can get. I'm pushing this point very, very hard because I'm going to show you some stats later that you probably, they, you almost won't believe, and I'm going to say, remember, this wasn't straight up cold advertising. I'm going to show you that this was how we did a boomerang system to bring these people back, and the return on investment is so high, it's almost unbelievable. Okay, so moving on. Um, the message you send to the people that leave uh, your website must be magnetic to get them back. And let's finally just wrap this part up and then get into the actual system by talking about the myth of free traffic. All right, I know a lot of uh, people doing any type of marketing, whether they're uh, you know uh, an infopreneur or they're a topic expert or they do local marketing. You know, they they want to get their clients' websites you know, ranked in the, you know, in the search engines. And I do understand that in local marketing it's a little bit easier because most local business competitors don't know a thing uh, at all about search engine marketing. But let's talk about it first. Free traffic is not free, okay? It takes time. Um, it's like planting seeds as opposed to just buying sod. Okay, uh, you plant seeds, there's a lot of variables when you, you know, whenever you're planting seeds for grass, okay, it's, uh, you know, you gotta worry about, you know, is there gonna be a drought? Uh, what's the weather gonna be like in six months? All these different things. So time is, it's our 
most important resource. It's the biggest cost that we have. It's something that it's the great equalizer. Every one of us has the same amount of time that we can put into a day. So we need to get the best return on investment on our time. Um, and remember, we want to think like an investor, right? We want to get not only for our money, but our time, we want to manage our risk with the highest return on investment. All right? And free traffic will likely take a lot of effort. And like I said before, it's so unreliable. Imagine if I, if I, Damien, if I was going to start a business today and I wanted to market my products, if you think for a second that I am going to start writing a press release, uh, writing articles, and uh, writing blog posts, and backlinking, and worrying about my keyword density, and then my title tags and my meta tags, and designing a site that is what the robots of a search engine deem important that when a visitor gets there it doesn't even have the proper message and then I'm going to wait six months to find out if it's even working it, it's to me it's brain it's damage and, yeah and it, I mean and it, and it does work I'm not telling people not to do this this is this is a strategy that you do at a later time you know um, I talk about this being the parsley next to the steak you know, uh, you know, if it's there, I'll eat it. Very good, no problem. But I'm not gonna. You know, what's more important to me is the steak. So uh, when it comes to getting leads for a business, I want to think like an investor. I want to manage my risk, manage my time, spend as little as possible, and find out if I'm failing quickly. And when I make a hit, I put everything I can back into that and let that explode. All right. And finally, you know changing algorithms, all these, you know, penguins and pandas and these different things. I've got friends that uh, I can tell you categorically, um, their business changed overnight. They were making hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, and they were tops in the search engine and then suddenly overnight their business went to zero because all their leads were coming from the search engine. You have to be in control of where your leads come from. You think you're in control when you are you know in the search engines but as soon as they make the changes and that's where all your leads are coming from well if you have a client that's doing you're doing that and there's a change and he suddenly you know he's paying you 1200 bucks a month and suddenly those leads stop coming in because there was a change in the algorithms that 1200 dollars eventually is going to stop coming in all right uh, you have and as i said you have little little control over your message because title tags are not sexy at one that you want them to be your headlines all right um, and as we said before, you're targeting keyword searching behavior as opposed to buying behavior. So uh, why are people so in love with free traffic? Because they've been burned by advertising. Remember, we spoke about the scars. They got crummy results. They wasted money. And if, uh, if I don't spend any money, then every sale I make is pure profit. And it creates that, uh, that mentality. And that's what you know, we're here to, to change that paradigm for you guys today. So, all that stuff about free traffic, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this jokingly, how's that been working out for you? And then I'm going to ask it very seriously. Honestly, how has that been working out? The truth is, more likely than not, not as good as you had hoped. All right. So every successful business you've ever heard of advertises. Um, so for everybody that's on this webinar right now, uh, take a look at your shirt, see if there's a logo on it your jeans, whatever company it is, the watch that's, that's on, the computer that's in front of you, the car that you drive, uh, and even the local stores that you go to advertise in the Yellow Pages, they advertise on Yelp, they advertise on uh, all these you know, different penny savers you know, with coupons, and they're paying you, right? Let's learn from the, your clients. They're paying you to get them leads. Every successful business advertises. It is, it is something that we have to understand. It is not a cost and it is not expense in our business. It's a profit center. We want to find out how we can spend a dollar to make two and then how we can ramp that up to spend 10000 to make 20000 and do that every day and put a system like that on autopilot. All right, as I said, the biggest brands, the most recognized products in the world, the most sought-after personalities all advertise. All right, the key to advertising and the key to getting traffic is a system that discovers copy, landing pages, uh, and markets 
that are already working, okay? You pre precisely target visitors that are buyers. You let artificial intelligence get you the cheapest traffic, optimize your bids, and find you the leads. And you waste not even a single visitor if they leave your website, even if they don't opt in. And you maximize these results with what we call the after-the-click system, okay? <clears throat> so now let us show you our system, and it's called the Traffic Universe. And get ready to take some notes because these are what we call the five fundamental laws of the traffic universe. And just as in our regu regular universe, there are fundamental laws, like uh, the, law, you know, uh, the law of gravity. If you change that at any, any point, you move that decimal point out a billion spaces, and you change a one to a zero, everything in this universe changes and ceases to exist in its current state. All right, And it's the same thing for advertising. There's a traffic universe with five fundamental laws. Guys, like I said, get ready to take some notes because you're about to learn the most important skill that an online entrepreneur needs to have, especially if you're representing people in your business where you're promising them to get leads. The most important skill. And what we're going to show you applies to any visitor to your site. So we believe Facebook to be the most profitable traffic, but once you learn this, it will work for YouTube advertising. It will work for uh, Google AdWords. It will work for the new Google Plus system. It will actually work for Twitter, which has a new advertising program, and we teach that as a bonus in our course. There, uh, it'll work for your blog cl clicks. Every type of traffic that you get will work with this system. So if you can give me five seconds, I'm going to just put myself on mute, take a sip of water, and then we'll continue. Back. All right. So Good stuff so far, Mike. What's that? Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate it, Damien. Good, good stuff. Yeah, uh, Laura, myself, and Andy, we, um, you know, we put this together. We broke down what people were doing wrong, and we think it's important to discuss that before we talk about what's doing right. And now here's the exciting part. Here's... Here's our system. So part one of five is what we call success surveillance. We want to know what the successful people are doing. So we get our binoculars out and we find out and we spy on them. Okay? We never start from scratch. We model what's already working and the tools will lead the way. That's the beautiful thing. We go into tools and they show us everything about our competitors. So Here's an example of success surveillance. We use a tool called follow.net to spy on our competition. And we're going to give you an example from the Forex market. All right? So um, this is, uh, is follow.net. This is their, their uh, website where you can go and you can create an account. All right? The first thing we want to know is we want to know what do the ads look like of our competitors. All right? So what we do is we log into follow.net. We also want to know what kind of ad offers they're making. So, like, what what is it? Is it is it a two for one haircut that's working? Is it um, uh, you know ten percent off? Is it advertising to seniors? Is it advertising Fourth uh, of July and you know specials based on the time of year? What is the offer that's making people come into these these local businesses? All right. Again, in the forex market, we get to see. Okay, well, this guy's using branding. Uh, his ad is giving away a free ebook uh, when you open a practice account, and he uses uh, uh, a, his book called Currency Trading for Dummies, and he has a download now button as the call to action. There are tools that will tell you that this is the best performing ad on the internet for currency trading. Okay. Um, we also want to know what their landing pages look like, so we don't have to reinvent the wheel. The craziest thing for us to do is open up our WordPress blog or Dreamweaver, or Optimize Press, or go to lead pages and start with a, a blank page that says Lorem Ipsum, and it says insert your headline here, You're right? Um, we want to know, what do their landing pages look like? Are they using video? Is the opt-in underneath? Is it on the right? I mean, these people have spent tens of thousands of dollars in advertising and split testing to find out the right pages that are working. So I'd like to just know the right page that's working and then model my page after that instead of trying to reinvent the wheel because guess what? 
that's why advertising is going to fail. You, you need to start from a winning standpoint. Okay? So we can go into follow.net and we can, we can uh, put in a search term and we can, you know, you know like um, let's say, uh, what, what, what's a, a good local business example you always use, uh, Damien? I don't want to keep saying hair cutter or nail salon unless that's, well, we, you know, that's. Let, let's, no, let's go. No, let's go with dentist or lawyer. Let's, those dentist are two of our most lawyer. recent okay, product yeah. launches. Because, because, right, okay. So we would, we would t type in uh, dentist San Diego County, right, or, or uh, lawyer, lawyer uh, 92101 San Diego, those types of things. You know, and that I'm sure you guys understand, right? And what's going to happen is we're going to get these landing pages of the top advertisers, and we can actually see the people that ha uh, have spent the most money and uh, meaning they've been doing this for years, right? You know, people don't continue to spend money when they're losing money, and either do we. That's why if our tests fail at 25 bucks, we stop and we say, hey, there's something wrong here, either in the ad who we're targeting or the funnel. And that's why my friend Trevor, the personal trainer, you know, he spent a thousand dollars before he made a sale. And I wish he would have told me sooner because you don't have to spend that kind of money. You fail fast and cheap, and profit. Uh, you profit. Uh, for a long time at great return on investment. So I would click on a link on one of these pages and then I can say, oh, okay, I see what this landing page looks like. They're focusing on this, this type of benefit. They're focusing on pain, pleasure. So I'll move the slides along because we, we actually talk about that. The next thing is we get to know how long they've been running these ads. So here's what's cool. These ads in this Forex example, um, I get to see I can sort by uh, how long the ads have been, been running. And I want to model my ads after the guy that's been running an ad for over a year, 375 days he's running this ad. Now, is there a one in 100,000 chance that he's spending a lot of money to throw off his competition? Possibly, but I doubt it. I mean, you know, there have been you know rumors of you know direct marketers used to spend uh, you know ten thousand dollar ads in the New York Times to throw off their competitors uh, because, but but I don't believe that's going to happen online. It's just a waste of money. Um, so we have to believe with certainty that when somebody is spending a good amount of money on this same exact ad for three hundred and seventy five mm -hmm. days, that this is his winning ad. So basically. You can see what his, uh, his headline is, Learn to Trade Forex with our free currency trading for dummies book. Uh, and then we have uh, the one underneath that that he's been running for a year, trading, Trade Currency with a Market Leader, Open a Risk-Free $50,000 Demo Account. So as a competitor, I know already what's working and what their landing pages look like and how long they're running their ads. Because if the guy is running the ad for 12 days, it doesn't give me enough confidence to use his headline and landing pages. Make sense? I, th I think so, right? All right, so it's no before you go. Um, has the ad been running for a while? It's probably doing pretty good. What is the offer, right? Are they giving away a free book? Are they giving away free reports? Are they giving away a trial version? Are they giving away a free coupon? A buy one, get one free. A dollar trial. Um, buy one bottle, get three, et cetera. You know, because Understanding what offer is working in the marketplace helps you say, okay, well, if that offer is working and that guy's been advertising it for a year, uh, you know, for the lawyer, free consultation, or for the dentist, it's uh, $50 towards your teeth whitening. Well, then that's what I want to know, that that's what's working for the dentist. You know, rather than just saying, hey, you know, we can fill cavities and, you know, cheaper than anybody else, right? We don't want to start from a blank sheet of paper, and I hope I'm driving that point pretty well, all right? Continued, we want to know what is the hook on their landing page. Are they focusing on uh, alleviating pain or are they focusing on seeking pleasure, right? So if it's a dentist ad, you know, maybe the dentist has a video that's dealing with the, hey, you know, you, uh, I know there's a lot of people that hate coming to the dentist. You know, every time uh, I go to a family dinner, everybody knows they need to come to me and they keep saying, uh, it's the scariest thing in my life. Well, let me tell you something about what happens at my practice. Well, first of all, you sit in a great environment room. Our wait staff is blah, blah, blah. You know, and now you find out that because there's an, another advertiser out there, you realize, wow, it's the pain that's stopping people from getting into the dentist. We need to, we need to make people at ease, right? 
Are they using curiosity in their headline? Are they using pattern interrupt and uh, are disrupting the marketplace? These are the things that you look on their landing pages that you want to know so that you can model. And what are they testing? All right, are they testing the offers? Are they testing the durations? So again, uh, are they saying that the coupon is valid for 24 hours? And then you look at their other landing page that they're testing with these tools, and then it says coupon valid for seven days. Um, and again, was it buy one, get one free? Is it 10% off? Is it kids get a haircut free with parents, right? Uh, these are the things that you like to know when you can see what, what's working in the competition. And of course, uh, what prices are, are they testing? Now again, a lot of this applies to online marketing, and I'm trying to keep my examples as well parallel for local business consultants. So next thing we want to know is, uh, we want to tell you, is to go out and copy what is already working. I could use the word model, but the reason why they call it copywriting and here's your swipe email files is because it comes from direct marketing. Uh, back in, in the days of uh, advertising early on, they would literally say, show me what Marlboro is doing, show me what so-and-so is doing, and they would rip out the ads, put them into a folder, and they would swipe the, the, the ads copy them and put them into what are called swipe files. And we use those terms in online marketing today like copywriting, but it, it really truly comes from copying what's successful. And I know this to be true because I was a general manager of a car dealership and every Saturday morning uh, I had prepared for me from Friday night's ad, every ad of all of my competitors was clipped and put into a folder for me and before we, we did our advertising, we looked at what our competitors were doing. What's working? Sign and drive lease or advertising the rebate at $14,999 to buy the car? Is it payment? Is it price? All the, is it zero down? And then we see, hey, you know, they've been running this ad for seven weeks. It must be working. Let's copy it. Okay? And so that's exactly what we do. We don't reinvent the wheel. We use success surveillance to keep our focus on what matters and you mar your market might be reacting in ways you didn't even think of. You thought that this was important to what people were searching for in lawyers, but you find out by uh, spying on your competition that the market is actually responding in spades to, you know, to different types of offers. All right, part two, getting the perfect click. All right, you need to target the right person at the right time with the right qualifications, okay? And getting the right person in front of your offer and everything else becomes so much easier. I like to use this example. Um, Damien, if you, uh, if you can unmute, uh, give, give me a, a bottle of water, um, you, know, that, uh, you know, one of the nice expensive ones that you like to drink. Uh, Fiji. Uh, let me tell you something about Fiji water, okay? Um, it's bottled. Uh, it's bottled at the source in Fiji. It's never touched by human hands uh, until you open the bottle and it touches your lips, right? And Poland Springs, you know, brought to you from Maine, all these different things. This is all copy, right? So this is stuff that's important to get people to buy your product. However, if you're in front of the right person, everything else becomes easier. If I'm at a marathon, and I we actually just had the San Diego Dine and Dash Marathon the other day, and I was watching this as they were grabbing the water, it cracked me up, right? Um, at, the, uh, at the end of a marathon, if everybody is just running by and their hands are on their knees, you know, and I have a bottle of water and I turn the label backwards and all they're seeing is not even the brand, and uh, I say bottle of water for a dollar, you know, they're going to reach in their pocket, grab a dollar, and, and buy it. Because who did I just target? the right person. If you're standing in front of a marathon where people are running, running by, you can hand the water out and they're just going to grab it and pay for it. Okay? Uh, everything becomes much easier. I don't have to tell you the backstory of Fiji when I have the right, the right um, audience. Now, of course, you still want to focus on conversion because that's going to allow you to broaden your advertising even better and convert, but we just want to first tell you that the right person is even more important than the copy. All right, and how do we find that right person, right? How do how do we how do we go to that marathon and and get in front of those people? Well, that's the magic of Facebook Connect. All right, now yeah, sure, likes, shares, follows, you know, they're just fine. But with Facebook Connect, Facebook knows 
over 150 data points and growing about the average user. Remember guys, I told you this is not the Facebook from a year ago. Does that, and you guys can type inside of the chat there and uh, let us know. Do you remember when you would log into Facebook and they would put you through this profile thing? What school did you go to? When did you graduate? What type of music do you like to listen to? What's your religion? What do you, uh, you know, what, what, what are your views on this? Uh, what type of uh, music do you like? Who are your heroes? Who inspired you? And you're like, oh my God, this is taking five hours to fill out my profile and the progress bar hasn't even moved. That's the old days of Facebook. And sure, they want to get that information, but you know, they needed to get some information about your profile so that they could help advertisers. And the data was limited. And again, you were able to advertise to your you know, 5,000 fans if you knew them, or people that were over 18, spoke English, blah, blah, blah. And it just, it just, wasn't, uh, it just wasn't the right people. And Facebook knew they had a problem. So there's something in this, in this uh, world called big data, right? You know, you've heard of Big Brother. Everybody's heard of Big Brother. That means there's a camera on every street, right? You're watching any movie. You're watching Homeland or 24, and they're like, get me a satellite on, on Market and Fifth, and they, you know, they pop right in. That's called Big Brother. Big data is very, very similar, but it has to do with data. There are companies that are getting data points on everything that we do. So I want, here's something I want everyone on this webinar to do tonight. I want you to go and watch a documentary. It's free on Netflix. It's called Terms and Conditions May Apply. Okay, this is a documentary about big data. There is a person there, and I'm not here to scare you, and this is not where I'm going. I'm basically letting you know how much data Facebook knows about you, and more importantly, every one of its 1.2 billion people and why they can find us the perfect buyer. Remember when they added Facebook Connect, um, they, you're logged in all over the internet. Now Google's the same way. When you're in Gmail, you're logged in all over the internet. So do you know that Facebook knows what URL you visit, what the purpose of that page is, the text that's on that page, how long you've been on that page, what you've looked at at Amazon.com, and when you hit the, the thank you page, when you've made a purchase at Amazon.com. So can, you can imagine that Facebook is collecting data on who's a buyer, of what, and what their interests are because you're connected to Facebook. And if you don't truly understand what Facebook Connect means, it means that when you go to a site to sign up, they show you a long form or they say connect with Facebook because you're already logged in. So Facebook knows so much information about us and what they're doing is they're buying data from big data companies. Because they know information about you of your name, your address, your email address, they can now go to big data companies and that have over 1,500 data points on you, and then they match it in the background to your profile. Okay, This is absolutely incredible. If I was to ask you, to give me 1,500 data points on you. By the time you got to 15 or 20, you would start doing things like your height and your eye color. And then you'd be like, I, I can't make it past 23 things. Um, I don't know that many data points about me. When it, you know, I've done income, you know, the type of community I live in, you know, my religious beliefs and my political beliefs, but it sounds easy. 1,500 data points will shock you. And let me give you one little story that happened if I may, in this documentary. Um, Damien, uh, they a, a leak came out. Um, oh, you, that, that I got to say something out. real quick. You, you, you just basically said, hey, Mike, I was going to say, and I'm sorry to interrupt like that, but I, yeah, you please. just basically said, Facebook knows more about me than I know about myself. Is that basically what That's you just said? That's the truth. Uh, uh, That's in this bad. documentary, you will see uh, uh, the head of the FBI, the head of the FBI is at a Senate committee and he says uh, something along the lines, no, that's not the case. We've actually closed down 95% of our, of our um, 
data investigation and spying, and then he chuckles and he says, because whenever we need to know something about it, we just subpoena Facebook and Google and we get all the information we need. <laughs> okay, now guys, this is the truth. It scared the hell out of me, but basically, you know, these are the laws that, you know, everybody's trying to change, you know, right, because, because they know what you've searched, how long you search, what you you know, what you bought, everything about us. Yes, Facebook knows more about you than you do. They know the data points that you don't even know exist about yourself. So here's an example that happened. Um, there were, was a complete wipeout of 15% of American Express account users got a letter in the mail that said, your American Express account has been frozen, you need to pay your balance off. And everybody flooded American, I've been with you for 17 years, what's going on? Why did you suddenly close my account? Guess what American Express did by buying big data and analyzing their data? They found that if somebody used their American Express at Walmart, within the next six months, they were likely to charge off. They realized that somebody that has a, an American Express card is a high credit, high value type of customer, spends a little bit more than the average person. Maybe they lost their job, maybe their spouse lost their job, or maybe they, they got into debt or they had a bad financial investment, and suddenly going to Whole Foods, you know, uh, you know, and spending money on organic vegetables, you know, they had the meeting at the living room table, we're going to need to cut back. And now they're suddenly shopping at Walmart. And that data makes its way to American Express, and they shut your account down. This is what big data is. So I'm not trying to do this to scare you. I'm trying to tell you that Facebook knows who the exact person is that is ripe for your offer. And it wasn't there a year ago. Okay, things have changed. And that's why everybody that you talk to that's now advertising with Facebook is is blowing up and it gets even better. All right, so I'm probably gonna recap a lot of what I just said because I wanted to free flow that. So Facebook Connect knows what blogs you read, what you watch, right? They know what you're watching on Netflix, what type of movies you like. They know when you log into Pandora, what type of music you like to listen to, what you're shopping for, what you buy and when you check out of Amazon, Zappos, Best Buy, Target.com, and just about a jillion trademark Andy Jenkins, other e-commerce websites out there on the internet. Okay? And anything you do on the web while you're logged into Facebook, they know. Okay? So Facebook knows what you want to buy. So here's an, uh, a screenshot from inside of Facebook that basically shows uh, a breakdown of uh, retail spending uh, based on uh, a, a custom audience group that you can create. If they're into kids' products, pet products, clothing, home and garden, household, income, all those different things, all right, based on purchase. And, and in just in about three minutes, I'm going to show you one more thing uh, where they're getting even more data on who buyers are, Damien. I'm not even sure if you're aware of it. It's going to blow your mind. So it's specific in the market uh, for a car. Well, Facebook knows uh, who is in the market for a full-size SUV, a minivan, an economy car, a sports car, a convertible, a mid-size car, or even a crossover or a Bentley. They know this information because they know what people are searching for. They know when you go to Toyota.com and you spend time on the Corolla page and not the Forerunner page. Okay, So now we can target visitors with ultimate precision. Our ads are only displayed to people that want, want what we've got. How beautiful is that? We're not just targeting 18-year-old English-speaking people in 19 different countries, all right? And we can find those people in vast numbers, okay? And that's where we're going to get into something called the traffic upgrade in just a minute, all right? But which leads us to exactly that, the traffic upgrade. See, I know my slides too well, all right? So this is, Damien, what we were talking about before about the problem of a year ago of finding the right buyer, uh, and even if you had the data and everything was working, your ad exploded for three weeks and then it just stopped working because you were advertising to the same 5,000 people and you couldn't get past it. And Facebook knew this was going to be a problem. They knew they had to solve this. So what they've done, um, 
we asked the question, is there a way to let Facebook use all of that data to automatically find the right kind of person and get the lowest conversion cost possible? And the answer is yes. Okay, the traffic upgrade, uh, there's two parts to picking the right audience. Number one, who they are and what they do. So remember we said Facebook knows what they do and they'll serve them up to you on a platter. Now, what kind of results do you want? Well, for, Facebook gives you choices, all right? Are you looking to get more clicks? Do you want more activity on your posts, on your, your actual Facebook posts? Do you want more page likes? Um, are you advertising for specifically mobile or even more specifically app installs or app use, app opens? Or do you want more people that are interested in going to uh, live events or do you want people that respond to uh, you know, contests and giveaways and things like that? So when you start your advertising, they actually ask you that. Are you looking for clicks? Do you want website conversions? And conversions is something new. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Do you want engagement on your posts? You know, you're trying to build your brand. Do you want page likes, et cetera? So they ask you all that stuff. So it's just not who they are, but it's what they do. And Facebook knows, and you can make that part of your campaign. All right? But next, we want them in vast numbers. All right? So we're going to, this is easy. We're going to use Facebook's lookalike audience to do this. Now, Damien, this is, uh, this is pretty new. When I say new, uh, this, uh, Laura, when did the look-alike audience come out? Would you say about two months ago, if uh, you're not on mute? We'll assume she stepped away for just a minute um, because she's really here for the no, Q&A. I, I, oh, oh. I had to unmute myself and find the button. No, look-alike audience is actually just, um, they've been, they've been um, available for a little bit of time, but now we have a lot more capability. Like we could only do a look-alike audience on certain things. Now there's many more data points that we can do lookalike audiences on. And so that's the difference. To be, yeah, yeah. To, be, to be accurate. Okay, thank you. So yep. um, Facebook lookalike audience means that say you've had 200 people like one of your posts about your product, right? Because you might have posted the one about your baby or the one about your cat that got 700 likes 300 shares and 250 comments because it was hysterical, but those people may not be interested in what you have to offer in terms of products. But let's say, you know, with my product, I posted about a free, uh, anybody interested in getting a free beta account to Webinar Jam, the first 200 people that comment get it because I need beta testers, right? Well, now I know people that are definitely interested in webinar software, right? So later, Say I've had those 200 people like my, my post. Well, you tell Facebook to make a custom audience. And I say, hey, Facebook, create a custom audience of people that like you know, that particular post or whatever and go out and advertise them. And now I can put specific ads directly in front of those people. Yay. All right. But here's where the magic happens. All right. So with a lookalike audience, I can tell people, I can tell Facebook, to find more people who look like that custom audience. So this is like basically taking a fingerprint of these 1,500 data points, or call it like a DNA, like you know when you're in court, right? And they say something like, we couldn't get enough DNA, but we do realize that one in 10 people in the population uh, have, you know, would be a match for this, all right? So basically, you tell Facebook, they look at the 200 people that like that post. They create a DNA fingerprint of those 200 people, and then they go through their 1.2 billion people, and they create a custom audience based on that. And Facebook, as it said, uses this huge data set, compares it, and with the entire user list of Facebook, and it creates a new audience. As I said, I get, I get ahead of myself on these slides here. Except this audience, guys, might be in the hundreds of thousands or even millions. So now you have an opportunity to take the group that you started of your buyers and you created a Facebook group or you have a list of 372 people that bought your products. You log into Facebook, go into the, the Facebook custom uh, editor, um, you upload those email addresses which they will let you, you create a custom audience and yeah, it's great that you could advertise to them, but now 
because of Facebook's 1,500 data points, you can say, go out and find me hundreds of thousands of people that are similar to my 380 buyers, and that's where you can start advertising to them. That's called the tap traffic update. That is awesome. Incredible, that right? That is awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the good, Damien, when I say the good times are back, they're back. Everybody we talk to. Uh, so, for instance, we, Damien, uh, we, for Traffic Genesis, for our launch, believe it or not, our number one affiliate was, uh, was cold traffic with Facebook. Cold traffic. Sure, we made a ton of sales retargeting the people that visited our sites, and we made those sales back for our affiliates, which was great. But we sold 20% uh, of our sales came from Facebook traffic for, for, for this product, and we beat our top affiliate, our real affiliate, three to one. Right? So we can continue to, you know, we don't have to rely on product launches to sell our products anymore. Um, Laura kept telling me, Mike, I'm, don't worry about anything with this launch. I'm, I said, no, no, Laura, Laura, we're doing good. I just want to give you the stats. She says, Mike, I want to tell you the stats that we just did uh, 24 sales yesterday with the advertising. Uh, and, like, I'm just blown away that, you know, what 24 sales is for a product like this. So next, we call our shot. So we always want to be in complete control of our click prices. And call our shot is, you know, comes back from the old Babe Ruth pointing in Yankee Stadium over to right field and saying, I'm going to hit this ball right over there, right? It's basically hitting a home run and calling it, right? So we want to be in complete control of our click prices, all right? So what if we could be in control of how much it costs us to get a customer? So Damien, I'm going to ask you if you're aware of this one. Do you know that Facebook now, after you've run your ads on uh, an impression based basis or a click basis uh, can get enough data on you that you can now only pay on a sale, CPA, cost per conversion. Do you know they have that? That is no, I did on not. Mute, Damien, in case you're that not is aware. cool. Yep. Yep. So, no, that is really yeah, cool. I so, did not know they have so, that. So let me show you how that works. So Facebook will automatically optimize everything, all right? And when you're doing your, you know, they call it CPM, which means that you, you'll pay, you know, 50 cents for every thousand impressions. Or you say, no, I only want to pay when I get a click. And then so they'll charge you 30 cents every time you get a click. Okay. But now they can optimize this campaign and they'll tell you what it's going to cost you to get a conversion. So once that happens, they now have something called CPC. We know this in our industry is CPA, cost per action. Uh, Facebook calls it target bid per conversion. So if you have a $97 product on your front end, Damien, you can tell Facebook, I will pay you $30 every time you make me a conversion. So you just made Facebook your affiliate at a 30% conversion. And guess what? You don't have to pay them on the upsells, right? So you can get click after click after click after click after click, and you don't pay a dime until you make a sale, okay? Now, this might be on the next slide, I'm not sure, but um, you know what a tracking pixel is, uh, Damien. I'm sure a lot of people here do know as well. Basically, a tracking pixel is something that, you, you know, Facebook is not going to take your word for it. You know, you're not going to email them and say, hey, I made a sale today when you really made 10, right? Facebook is going to ask you to put a little bit of code on your website. When I say code, I mean the same thing like you get when you embed a YouTube video. You know, you get code and you paste it on your website or your WordPress blog or whatever. So once that's there, Facebook will automatically charge in this scenario 30 bucks every time somebody lands on that landing page, which means you just made 97 and they went through the funnel. But getting out of all that, let's talk about big data again. Damien, do you realize that with this, Facebook is going to know which one of their users are actually landing on landing pages. So when we go back and we say we want to optimize our websites for conversions, well, guess what Facebook's going to do? It's going to send you the buyers because it knows who they are. And as this particular style of advertising, as yeah. advertising is going to grow, they're going to know who the buyers are for what types of offers. Remember, they know how you're setting up your ads. They know the ad copy. They know information about the copy and the conversion and they're only going to be getting better this is amazing and if, if you think for a second facebook wants to send you bad traffic at high prices 
that means for a second that you think that Facebook wants to give you a scar. They don't. Facebook knows that if you're scarred, you will never come back. Facebook wants you to be successful. They want your bid prices to be low and they want your profits to be high because they know that you'll invest even more and say, I want to give you all my money. So Facebook is there to help optimize your campaigns, help give you the data, help find you the buyers and keep your bid prices down. Okay, this is the new Facebook advertising, guys, and it's very, very And obviously, they're getting better and better and better at it. This big data points is 1,500 now, but soon it'll be a lot more than that as they continue, this ecosystem continues to evolve. Like, this is insane. Yeah, they'll, they'll know <laughs> when we... Depth ...of the knowledge that they have. I mean, I knew, you know, look, I'm, I'm, I'm sure everybody's pretty clear that, that Facebook and Google, I mean, they've got a lot of information on us, but my eyes are wide open right now. This is insane. And what I like that you've done here is you guys have figured out how to exploit that to your favor in marketing. Exactly, that's yeah, awesome. and that's why I want you to watch Terms and Conditions May Apply. The documentary was there to scare the hell out of you, and maybe it should, but then it really drives the point that, hey, well, you know, in the meantime, if Facebook, if Facebook knows that data and I can put an ad in front of that customer, then hey, uh, let's, uh, you know, let's do that because you know, it's all part of the terms of service that everybody agrees to when they join Facebook. All right? Yeah, so, and I, I just want to jump in for a second if that's okay, boys. Please. A uh, couple of things. One is, is that if you have something that's converting, this optimization is just crazy good, okay? Now, you know, Facebook's not going to continue to send you traffic if you're not converting, but if you're converting, man, you can just scale up like crazy. The other thing is, is that just to give you a really good example of how crazy good this targeting is, I was staying at uh, Mike's house in San Diego, and I mentioned in a post that I needed somebody to clean my house, and like 20 minutes later, there was an ad for a house cleaning service. Service, okay, that showed up in my news feed. Freaky, cool. I did use them, so I mean, it is, it is, uh, it's, it's a pretty immediate kick right in the butt. And as a marketer, it's just crazy good. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, isn't that isn't that incredible? Like you're searching outside of Facebook, and then ads start uh, showing up in your news feed. All right, this is very similar to what we're going to get in, into here in Boomerang Advertising in concept, but that was more about big data. So next is Boomerang Advertising. So I'll, I'll move this along uh, here because uh, we're at the hour point. Um, remember we said this is the richest source of traffic we've ever seen, and it's the highest converting traffic, and it builds authority and credibility like never before. All right. The concept of boomerang advertising essentially uh, is what's known as retargeting. Uh, every time I use the word retargeting, somebody says, I don't get it. Uh, when I say boomerang advertising, they, they say, oh, does that mean bringing the visitor back to your site? I say yes. All right. So when a visitor comes to your website, they leave because, well, whatever. You know, 90% of them do. They just do. People just come to websites and they don't buy. Really, it's 99%. Right? Later, when they're surfing, they see your ad, but this time your ad is on CNN or the New York Times or Mashable or AOL.com or MSNBC or the Huffington Post, okay? And how is that for some credibility? You know, uh, suddenly, uh, you know, somebody is saying, hi, um, have you been injured in an accident? And whoop, close the ad, whatever, you know. Hey, we got to go. Let's go eat. Okay, honey, I'll be right there. And you run out the door, right? And you remember hearing the guy's name. Uh, and then later you come on and you're surfing and you're at YouTube or you're reading something at Gizmodo or Mashable or Huffington Post and all of a sudden you see that lawyer advertising right there saying, uh, contact me for your free consultation, injured in an accident or whatever. And all of a sudden the guy's like, holy cow, this lawyer's the real deal. Here I am on the front of CNN.com and he's advertising there. I, I should click on that. All right. So. That's just one thing. All right, so your message is perfect, all right? So you know what they're looking for, uh, what they were looking at, so you can give them the perfect message. Free shipping on that thing that you were just looking at. So what if they bounced at your order page? Well, you could say things like, uh, you know, giving them a free shipping if they order today, get this additional bonus, or, hey, use this $100 coupon valid for the next 24 hours if you have a high-priced product, right? Giving them a free trial, all right? Or, or a limited time offer on what they're looking at. So let me let me tell you the way this works, guys. Right. So in part five, we're going to get to in about one minute. 
um, it's called the after the click system. We show a funnel. So basically, let's say I had a squeeze page that was offering a free report of the seven things you need to know before you hire a carpet cleaner, right? Or, you know, in my industry, you know, the seven things you need to know before you do Facebook advertising. Um, and the next page was a $7 product, and the next offer after that was a $297 product, and after that was the upsell, and then after they bought, there was a webinar to buy a product for $2,000, right? Typical marketing, right? Well, with Facebook or other retargeting companies uh, that we use, um, like Perfect Audience and things like that, you create these little if-then scenarios, and you say, if somebody leaves this page and doesn't get on this page, then show them this ad. If they show up on this page but don't make it to here, then show them this ad. So imagine you came to my site and didn't opt in for the free report. I would have an ad following you all over Facebook and all over CNN and Mashable and every site that you visit in the world that has advertising on it, which is almost you know every site, and you would see a picture of me saying, hey, wait, you forgot this survey. I'll give you, uh, you, you forgot this free report, I'll also give you this bonus report, click here, right? But let's say you opted in and got the report, but you didn't get my $7 uh, paid report. I could say something like this to you, um, hey, um, uh, use this $3 coupon right now, uh, use this $4 coupon right now, save 50, over 50% off on my blah, blah, blah report, right? Because now I'm targeting based on where you left. And so now I bring you directly back to that page, but that page has a coupon code for you to enter and save four bucks on the report. Same thing for the 297. If you bought the seven dollar product but not the 297, I could say something like, "Hey, try it out for free for 30 days," or all this different stuff. Get this bonus. Here's a coupon code. Well, it's free shipping, right? If you didn't buy the upsells, I could retarget you and say. Hey, you bought Webinar Jam. Um, there's still time to get Webinar Genesis. Get it for 50% off today only. Boom, you click. You go to a page and it says, hey, it's Mike Fulsaim. Uh Remember, you, you bought Webinar Jam, but you didn't buy Webinar Genesis. We really believe that the training of how to do a webinar can really help you. So much so that for the next 24 hours, we're willing to give it to you for half price. You see what I'm doing right now? I'm targeting people at where they left my funnel. And my ads are so specific and have the perfect message that they can't help but click. It's almost like, how, how does he know? And then the message is so perfect because it's saying you bought Webinar Jam but didn't buy Webinar Genesis, right? And then I know who registers for the webinar. But hey, a lot of people w registered for this webinar, but you can also know who didn't show up. And then all you've got to do is imagine a little ad of me and Damien, you know, that we took from the cruise when our arms were around us, and it said something like, uh, miss the webinar? Click here to get the replay. I mean, how cool is that? Do you guys understand how powerful that type of advertising can be when used? All right, so um, I'm probably going to repeat myself again, so I'll go fast here. The best part is, what will it cost you to get your ad in, in, uh, in front of these mainstream media giants and websites? Dimes, nickels, and quarters. All right, retargeting technology, we can retarget and boomerang any visitor that comes to our website or any page on our site. I'm recapping here what I just said. We can be specific and give each page they visit a different retargeting ad, and we can retarget them on or off Facebook. Remember, Huffington Post, AOL, MSNBC, CNN, just like that, okay? Um, here's a test retargeting campaign that we did for Video Genesis last year, all right? Now, remember, you can't buy as much of this traffic as you want because you can only retarget as many people that have been to your website. So basically, we retargeted people, if my mouse is working here and you can see it, we retargeted people um, in their news feeds, and that was a total ad spend of $7, and we targeted people on the sidebar with this little ad that you see here, all right? And that cost us 18 bucks. And the spend total cost us $26, and we got 60 clicks. We got 38 opt-ins, and that resulted in $4,693 in sales. For a total spend of $26, our EPC, meaning earnings per click, was $78 for every click. It was 180 times return on investment. And the cost to get a lead, the cost per conversion, 
for a $300 product was 46 cents to make a sale for a $300 product and 55 cents when it was in the sidebar. That's why we told you the people that leave your website is the richest source of traffic you can advertise to with retargeting boomerang advertising. Okay, and it's very, very important. So what we're doing is we're showing you a system for no fail traffic that you could give Facebook money and they're going to give you a return investment in spades. Okay, um, here's an example that Laura did for her one of her clients that had uh, barbecue grills, these highly expensive four thousand and three thousand dollar barbecues. Right, so people visited the site and dif didn't buy. So basically, what you can see here, um, they brought up 1,190 people that didn't buy back to the site, okay? Out of those 1,190 people, they converted 182 of those people. And the, the, the cost for, uh, per conversion was $3.69 and the profit was $671 for every $3.69 that they paid. This is bring, this, so this works for anything. It works for $3,000 barbecues, all right? So part five, guys, is what we call the after-the-click system, all right? So basically, I'm going to walk you through this very quickly because I think you understand it in the last example and everything that we've been talking about, and I'll blow this up a little bit bigger so you can see a little bit bigger, and we'll make sure that you get a copy of this in a PDF emailed out to everybody that registered. So basically here, guys, this is a process map. Competitive analysis, this is success surveillance. We start our marketing generally on Facebook, right? Remember we told them we send them to a landing page or a survey about their needs. What is the single biggest reason you are having problems sleeping or whatever? But we got this information by seeing what our competitors are doing, right? Now, if uh, down here it says uh, retargeting. So every one of these pages has a retargeting campaign. We put an exit pop here on all of these green funnel points and we get their email address if they bounce out, okay? But the survey they opt in then basically sends them to what we call a micro offer. It's also been called a tripwire. Um, it's a sales page or, or a video sales letter with like a $7 uh, product or $7 to $47. We then move them along to our more expensive products like our 47 and $297 products. Again, everything here has an exit pop and these exit pop, what, I'll read what they say. They send them to a free video page that expands on the proof with less fluff. It gets to the point very, very quick in the training, and it usually does a product demo, and there's a close that pivots back to the offer, okay? And you will also see that these little things, all these little exit pops, they lead back to this little section here, right? They're, and what that means is every time we gather their email, we have a 10-part email follow-up system depending on where we captured the email. All right, and the, these emails should sell on the main value proposition, handle common objections, handle frequently asked questions, the price objection, the will it work for me, and offer price solutions and focus on no risk. Okay, but this is a pretty standard funnel. Here's the upsell, and when we're done, we're fulfilled, and we take those customers and we invite them to a live or an automated webinar. And this little green section right here basically has Every offer is pointing back to it. The webinar is pointing back to it. Our offers over here are pointing back to it. And our retargeting and our email follow-up series drives back to the offer with different price points. Now we're going to focus on dollar trials, free trials, light versions, coupons, etc. That's our follow-up. And then finally over here, this email list that we get, we segment non-buyers and buyers. So we have to assume we paid for the traffic. So non-buyers, man, we did everything. We did retargeting, advertising, email, everything they didn't buy. At this point, we've built a list. So here we're going to mail offers for our products, affiliate products. We focus a little more heavily on offers and a little less on content. We paid for that click. It's time to monetize these leads that we paid for. They didn't like any of our products we had to offer. We paid for the traffic. So it's best to find another offer so that we can recoup the investment, right? But when they did buy, well, here we mail content and videos back to our sites. Uh, we use social media and brand loyalty for engagement. We promote offers on our own sites and always provide value and training.